Oh, now that looks familiar. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. It's time for that weekly mod collection demo shop update. Two weeks ago, I ordered this beautiful red Whirl Les Paul Custom, wanting to document it because I had the really cool matching headstock and stinger, but unfortunately, my order was denied. So imagine my surprise. Two weeks later, we get a brother model to that one. It's a blue Whirl Les Paul Custom, except for they just called it Blue Flood. So that definitely confirms my thoughts that these customs were inspired by the original Flood Les Paul Studios. So now that we've seen blue and red, keep your eye out for green and silver. But different this time, it looks like we've got larger brush strokes on this. It nearly looks like it was hand painted with like a paintbrush. I like this way better than the red because the blue pops and then you've got the black swirls underneath. It matches really well with your black pit guard, black plastics, uncovered humbuckers and speed knobs. But this time they've opted to have gold hardware. So that kind of helps with the whole blinginess as well. But my goodness, did they pair awesome Mother of Pearl with this headstock or what? So we got the matching headstock, but the blues and the whites just really come out of that pearl. When complemented with that finish, they did a fantastic job here. So if we got the matching headstock and the swirly finish, does it have the stinger that the last one had? It sure does. They just painted it straight over the Gibson Custom logo. And also like that other one, the rest of the guitar is black. Now that works really well for the whole black and blue. It's like you've gone so far deep into the ocean that you just can't see anymore. And ooh, nice, coming down here, it says they put age 68 pickups in there. You don't find that pickup set too often. So you might be saying, hey, Trogly, did you buy this one? I didn't even try. It was 5,500, and for some reason, at upload, I thought, hey, isn't that like $1,000 more than last time? And no, it was only 200, but it didn't need me to sell. Somebody added it to their collection. But to follow that up, we've got an interesting custom shop junior that I feel was priced very appropriately, 3300 So this isn't a Gibson USA junior, it's a custom shop. So these are typically somewhere around 4000 ish brand new, and the used market typically dictates somewhere between 25 and 33 So that's why this one fell right in the sweet spot of the used market, but it has a very unique finish. I could have seen Gibson doing this finish back in the 50s. It's just a smoky burst, but this time it's perimeter in style rather than our usual teardrop shape. But those black edges work well with our black plastics. But to make things even better, they did the burst on the back, on the neck, and the headstock. Now whether they did it on the sides or not, I'm not entirely too sure. But they still gave us the custom shop case. I'd say the only downside to this is it looks like they did a satin refin instead of gloss. That's very apparent if you look at the truss rod and then the headstock but I suppose it matches the antique burst that they're going for. But how about this for a blindingly sparkling burnout your retinas? Snow Cone Sparkle SG Base. Honestly, there's so much going on with this thing, I didn't quite fully understand what I was looking at. Is the camera saturation so overblown, or is that just how the finish is? But if we dial that down a notch, it kind of helps you understand what's going on here. First off, normal SG bases, they aren't laid out like this. This is one of those Motobo Wataru signatures that we've been talking about that we've been seeing a few in the demo shop. It was a Japan market exclusive base, but it was still made in the USA, so they got a couple of Blem models that they're trying to have some fun with here. So that was the whole gimmick of that guitar it had a sparkly white finish to begin with. You can see it right here on the back of the headstock. But they decided to amplify it by doing a blue sparkle over top of the existing sparkle only on the edges. I think it looks pretty good from far away. Although up close, I would argue it looks a little bit strange and sloppy. The glitter went a little bit crazy here and got on the binding. But art is meant to be appreciated from far away, not up close with a magnifying glass. But I'm really glad they provided us this photo because it helps us understand what's going on here. But as far as the back, again, it's only the carved edges that got the extra purple glow. So you don't have it on the neck and headstock. They could have did it, but honestly, I'm glad they left it very sparingly. But that wasn't too bad of a price, 2100 because that's about how much it would have cost to have imported one of those to the U.S. Next up, we've got one of the older style Gibson Flying Vs in cherry finish. So it's the old half pick guard style. I remember I was really excited when these things first came out because it's reminiscent of the V98 model. It was a small limited edition, but they had the output jack still down here, so it's not exactly the same. But the cherry color looks good on this, and look at our rosewood fretboard. I like how streaky it is down here. Extra rosy. However, overall, it's not the craziest thing we've ever seen out of the mod collection. It's just cherry front and back. But at least the body has some nice figuring, and we still have the case. 
But I hope you're ready to get crazy. We've got P. Fowl Satin Les Paul Tribute. This one was a little bit tempting because it's weird and quirky and I like animal influence Les Pauls. We've got the whole green going on here. And then we've got some cream. They put P94 pickups in here. We've got chrome hardware. It looks like they upgraded our hardware to Les Paul Standard Gibson USA ABR1 style. And you might even have custom shop knobs on that. Cool. But then you get to your headstock and they've replaced your truss rod cover and you get this kind of blue sparkly old time Gibson logo. All right, so you got your whole blue and green thing. Peacock feather looks like this, so that's what they were going for. That's the end of the story. Let's move to our next one, Crema Sparkle. Nah, just kidding. You gotta look at the back of this thing. They decided to make the back blue as well, and then you get a natural colored neck. So green top, blue back and sides, natural neck. It's tying in all the colors of the animal. I give it an A for the idea. However, I don't know. The execution, I think, could have been done better on like a Les Paul standard in a gloss finish. Or better yet, a Les Paul custom. But that's gonna be a lot of fun for somebody, and it found a loving home. Now we can talk about Crema Sparkle. So this is 850 standard at a slight premium at 3200. If you like rust color, it's definitely for you. It gives me the vibes of shifting from light to dark would look really cool in person, especially over the carved top. It looks like maybe the pickup covers are matching it as well. They're just so dark, it's kind of hard to tell. And ooh, nice, you get a custom bucker, custom shop Alnico 2 bridge pickup. But you don't have a matching headstock or anything. No crazy stinger shenanigans, but it is a complete gloss refin. At the time of recording, this one's still here. But they also did a Sparkle Persimmon Top 50 standard at three grand. This kind of reminds me of the Les Paul Catalina in Riverside Red. But yet when you zoom in here, you've got something strange going on with your pickups. They're trying to make them look like gold foils. So what they've done is they have this wire mesh over top of the pickup and then they put the cover over top of it. That's radiator grill style to give you a new interesting effect. I like what they're doing there. They're getting creative, but you can still see your adjustable and flat pole pieces. So they didn't do anything too crazy. But now that we've really zoomed in here, you can definitely tell that finish is going to come to life in person. It's not a perfect pure red. And oh, the natural back, okay. That would actually look pretty good because you gotta remember the Rocket Red Sparkle Deluxe, they also have the red sparkle top and natural back and they look pretty sweet. And this one, it's got such tight grain in the mahogany. I like that. And then a little bit of a unique characteristic there. I can see why somebody took that interesting one home. And then to wrap up the mod collection, we've got an SG Special in Harmonious Burst Satin. 1900 bucks, it's actually a pretty cool color. I wouldn't have called it Harmonious Burst, this more looks like the war has begun. But you've got your toaster pastry P90s with the mini humbucker plates over top of them, nice dark red bursted finish, really dark fretboard, and a completely black back with what appears to be a satin finish. And oh, I like that, you can see the original red cherry color still underneath. So what that means to me is this started life as one of those sparkling burgundy ones and then they just added the black over top of it. Or they just shot the whole thing red before they did that. One or the other. So a decent week out of the mod collection, but let's see if the demo shops have anything for us. USA side, it was mainly standard production that had some small nicks and dings, but there were a few good deals if you were quick. Such as an Adam Jones Les Paul Standard at 2300 bucks. You're saving nearly a grand on that. All because of a seam line showing and a little bit of a discoloration in the binding. I can see why that was a demo. Next up, you've got a deep purple Les Paul Special, except for it's so deep, it just looks black. However, I think it's just because of the really bright background, making it look darker for the camera. But these are a Gibson.com exclusive if you happen to have missed out on this one. This was one of the better deals this week, a 70s Flying V and olive drab finish. So when the 70s Flying V first came out, they were only 2000 bucks. Today, they're 2500 So it doesn't matter what year production that you're comparing the brand new price to. 1800 bucks is a good deal for one of these if you like the color scheme. And don't mind a couple of dings back here by your strap. When I first saw this unburst standard 60s, I thought it was custom shop. That is a good top on one of those. But no, it's Gibson USA production. Kind of an interesting mix matched back, but it is what it is. The price to pay to have a nice top. And then this was pretty shocking. A 68 left-handed Les Paul custom. You don't see the 68 reissues too often in the demo shop. We've seen a few these past couple of weeks, but not in left-handed. So that was a great deal for someone. I can understand why it sold so quickly because to custom order that, probably at least 7,000 would be my guess. And that was theirs for a little over four grand. That wraps up stateside. Now we've got the UK demo shop. These guys just had a big influx of all the 50s and 60s standards. 
What stood out to me was this one, because it's a lefty, and because of the dark portion in the center of the guitar. That's one of those tops that really transforms in person. The rest was pretty basic. There was a 60th anniversary 59 reissue. They're really trying to get rid of these through the demo shops, but they were 6,500 brand new, and that's 5,400 including all taxes. Yeah, remember, in that market, that is an insane deal, and it's a good top. But what exactly is wrong with it? Maybe a small ding there. Some scuffing in the finish. That'll happen when you have a strap on it. I wouldn't worry too much about that. And oh, there it is. That's why it's a demo. There's a little ding at the top. I'd say that was a good deal. But our next one, this is the 1960. They were technically about the same price brand new. But the top's interesting with the flame and the grain. But the reason why this one's in the demo shop is a little bit more extreme. So it's not this ear this time. It's over there. That is a big ding into the top of someone's ceiling and it chipped the finish. Ah, oh, I feel bad for him. For me personally, I don't care if there's dings on the back of the headstock or a couple around the edges, but once it affects the face of it, it definitely devalues the guitar significantly. Now thankfully it's black and you can touch it up so it's not as apparent, but usually it just looks worse than what you began with, if not done professionally. So this one, I would just more so say it's an okay price for what it is. The 60 standard, I decided to feature it because it was modified. I gave it a cream pick guard and an uncovered 57 classic pickup with speed knobs. And then we got a 57 gold top at 5800. If you've ever found yourself questioning why people like gold tops, because I used to be in that camp, why would anybody want this? This photo does it. You see how it's bright right here at the belly and then dark in the other areas? It really comes to life in person. This is the beauty of the gold top. It's not always apparent in photos, but the photographer for these demo shops knows how to capture it. I mean, the fretboard's actually pretty light on this example too, but then you get the natural back and side so you can appreciate the wood grain. And all that coming together, now you have to imagine it from viewing it the other way as you're strumming it, there is a unique romantic balance there to where you don't necessarily need a flame top to make you happy. But they also had this one, if a flame top makes you happier. And now to wrap things up, the European demo shop, Netherlands style. They've still got a whole bunch of strings, but another fantastic 50 standard. That's a good top. No way around that. Decent back too. But this AAA 60s for about 2400 has a unique top. I personally wouldn't have called that AAA. It's got a lot of flame, but it's not really wide. So it's kind of interesting, mineral streaky. It looks very vintage. And while most people would go for the wider one, this next photo might convince you otherwise. This guy knows what he's doing with his lighting. Very soft, brings out all of it. It nearly looks like finish checking. That's what it's doing. Definitely not a traditional top by today's standards, but it looks great. I mean, for the same price, also apparently hand select. You could get this. Just shows you how much it varies. But looks like we got gold hardware, radiator grill style pickup covers. And yeah, that's about it for that one. And lastly, we've got this Les Paul Classic that was up for $1,600. All right, Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed our recap this week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.